Hi there, it's Anna Kaban coming to you from Los Angeles, California. I am the brand ambassador for Balanced Body and I'm hosting a series of interviews we're calling Navigating Our New Normal. My guest today is coming to us from his home in Santa Fe, New Mexico. It is Kevin Bowen, who I've known for over two decades, two decades, and uh, I'll toss it over to him, not four, not yet, two decades, so he can introduce himself. Hey, Kevin. Hi, Anna, how are you? Great. Good, good. So we're going to go back and forth with the video. But yeah, we've known each other for uh, a long time. Over two decades. I think you were, what, 15 at the time? <laughs> Something. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's right. Tell so, us about uh, where we find you. You live in Santa Fe. How do you work? What's your website? What can we know about you? So um, basically, I'm sitting in my dining room right now because I have to work from home. Um, so I run Core Dynamics Pilates, and that's um, the teacher training program based on Eve Gentry's work that I took over from Michelle Larson five years ago. Um, mostly I travel and do training, so um, those have been canceled, obviously. Um, I do have a studio here in town, and I do see some clients when I'm here. Um, and right now, I'm just doing some Zoom classes. Um, I'm starting to do that. And next week, I think we'll have about five up um, live that we'll do every day. And then I have two free classes a week that are half an hour each and the others will be 50 minutes with a 15 or 20 minute um, you know, wrap up at the end in case people need help with form or um, specific tutorial for something or something I saw when they were working out. That's what I'm doing, but there's other things too, but that's the Pilates part of it. So where would we find those workouts? Like how would someone access them? Um, the easiest way to do it is to email me, Kevin, at coredynamicspilates.com. Uh, you can also go to uh, coredynamicspilates.com. I'll have the schedule up tomorrow of the classes I'll be teaching. Um, online, there'll be mat um, floor work classes. Um, there will be a half an hour free teacher's class, which I mentioned I'm doing two classes, um, but there is a half an hour free teacher's class and that's gonna be equipment. So it'll be tower and um, reformer and some mat and some standing work. So I'll have those all up by tomorrow on coredynamicspilates.com. Super, super. So what is Kevin doing to navigate this unusual time on a personal note, managing the stress and just the uncertainty of every given minute? Um, I have things I'm trying to do. Um, I am also here in Santa Fe, the president of the Human Rights Alliance, and we put on Gay Pride every year. And we're in the process of expanding and going back to the original um, mission of the organization that started here in New Mexico in 1993 um, for gay and lesbian rights and managed to get a lot of uh, legislation put into the state government. So now I'm the president of that. So we're doing right now, um, uh, it's a little bit of a, a, I'll say it, a shit show because we have gay pride to put on in June and we can't really do that. So I've been working with the city um, about the, on this project and on this new and the expansion that we're doing with the organization. But basically we have to move forward. Like we're going to run gay pride on June 27th and the city will tell me on May 27th, if it's a go or a no go. And then we have an alternate date set up for September. So that's part of what I'm doing. And the other thing I've done is I filmed a couple of free classes, um, for the city of Santa Fe, because I'm in touch with them and work with them through the Parks and Recreation Department um, for people who are home. One is a chair class for people who can't get up. Uh, they're about a half an hour. No, actually, excuse me, they're 15 minutes. So it's a little home movement. And the second one is a, a little bit more advanced class for people who could actually walk outside and come back in. Um, and then the other thing I'm doing is where I live, there are separate little cul-de-sacs with the different townhouses and homes, and I'm a cul-de-sac captain. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know there was such a thing. 
<laughs> That's a new thing, a cul-de-sac captain for the 15 homes in our cul-de-sac. So um, I'm the guy that you would contact if you're having a problem. We have a lot of um, elderly people here and um, some that are living alone and others that are, you know, in their 80s still living at home. So I will go to the store for them and pick up things that they need and, um, you know, whatever else I can do if they need contact with city services, if there's a problem with health or wellness or something, um, then I will basically arrange that because we have uh, inroads to the city. So we're trying to just do our community best to keep everything happening here. And, um, and then I'm also looking in because she lives in two cul-de-sacs over is Michelle Larson. She lives mm -hmm. here so to um, look in on her too. That's what I'm doing. Let's just say, Kevin Bowen is no slouch. <laughs> you definitely don't just sit around. You're taking care of everybody. That's so amazing. And I have to say, I love what you're doing for the community. Uh, they may not be our Pilates normal clientele, but everyone needs to move, as we know, movement heals. And my son is about to start the homeschooling or the remote learning, they're calling it, next week. He's on spring break. And the city sent us kind of an outline of what a day might look like. It was very regimented. It was an optional outline, but it was like 8 a.m. breakfast and this, that, and the other, 9 a.m. reading, 10 a.m. Um, and there was a time for PE. But it made me think about creating a couple Zoom workouts during the week that are short, like 20 minutes, that the sixth piece in sixth grade, his classmates could all jump on and do a class with me. And we could just make that part of PE because I feel like at this point with what's going on in the world, Everyone needs to share their skills. You know, everyone, this is our, we have resources within us. We have talents within us. Some of us are dancers and other things too, and it can help bring joy or pick up groceries, whatever we can do. And I figured I could do this from my house. I could teach a sixth grade PE, a movement class, um, and make it one last thing the parents have to do for that half hour, you know, give them a little reprise. So, I think I'm going to, you really motivated me, motivated me to say, okay, guys, I'm here for you. I, I kind of think it's really an important thing for all of us to do at this point. Um, I, you know, running a not-for-profit here and working with the Pilates Initiative that I started, it's all kind of melding together. Um, you know, I'm encouraging everyone work it, do something in your community. People need help and relief and, um, we were gonna to try to do some outdoor classes and I've been told by the director of parks and recreation that I can, but I have to keep the number down now. The city will allow us to get, you know, five people and spread them out. And so there's myself and a couple of teachers that you may have met here, we're trying to do that. Um, but, you know, we made a plan to do it this week and then they said, no, you can't do it. And, and I just got a text last night from the director of parks and recreation that said you can. But, you know, I, for me right now, um, I don't think like I can sit around and, you know, not get involved. I just think it's key and it's important. And my partner is a nurse and he's in healthcare. And I don't even know what that's going to look like once we get to a point of, um, increase cases on a regular basis because we're very, um, you know, New Mexico's poor. We have a fabulous governor, but we're kind of poor. And we have a nice hospital, two hospitals in Santa Fe. Um, but then the next ventilators, um, if we have those issues, which we already have people in intensive care, the next ventilators are south of us by an hour in Albuquerque. So, Santa Fe kind of plays host to the entire northern part of the state, Taos, and the other communities around here, which are quite a few. Um, so, you know, we got to work together just, just to help people out. Absolutely. Great advice. So, Kevin, are there any tips you could share with fellow instructors out there that are trying to navigate their day-to-day? You know, to me, and but I've always been like this, is like I try to be on a schedule every day. I try to, you know, I have more Zoom meetings now than I've ever had in my entire life. But, you know, those things are happening. And I just try to stay uh, involved, you know, making sure that my day has got something going on in it, um, trying to give back a little bit, trying to keep a little humor in the situation and turn the freaking TV off 
you know, to only look at it at specific times because it just makes us, I think, all crazy. Um, and just maintain a positive attitude. Uh, I personally don't want to be afraid of this. And um, uh, so I'm not, I'm just not. Because quite honestly, I've been through a lot worse in my life than a coronavirus, but that's beside the point. So this to me is just like, okay, what can I do? Keep a positive attitude. Um, you want business advice too? You want some of that? Anything you want to share. Okay. Um, if you're a small studio owner, I suggest that you find out what's going on in um, your community as far as your city and your county, how uh, SBA loans may be working. Um, there's a government website. There's some new information out. Obviously, you can go and see about applying. Are you a subchapter S? Are you a, a limited liability company? Those things are going to be different. Are you sole proprietor? That's a different package that you could get. Um, the other thing I think that's important to remember is if you go for an SBA loan, you're going to have to pay it back. So look at it as, um, you know, funding your rent for a period of time. Um, <clears throat> perhaps, of course, funding yourself a little bit <clears throat> and whatever expenses you have with the studio. Um, <clears throat> And maybe use this time to um, expand your video offerings, which is what we're all doing, and, and see I'm adding some things into my studio right now that I should have done before so that I can actually have better video presence there. So I'm doing a lot of things there to help me with that. And it's kind of putting a fire under my butt, so to speak, to get that done. And um, just be present and involved. Um, and also, if anyone wants to join us, we're doing town hall meetings, the Pilates Initiative. So myself and the board um, are going to go on a call again next Wednesday. We just did one yesterday at noon. It's free. Um, if you go to my Facebook page or the Pilates Initiative's Facebook page or Core Dynamics Facebook page, you'll see the information for it. Just send me an email and I will uh, send you the invite. We can take 100 people. Um, this week, I think we only had about 15, but we were answering questions, sharing information, talking about what's happening with insurances and online protocols and all of those things that are um, important for you to know about um, during this time. Those are amazing resources, Kevin. Thank you for sharing that. See, business and also just personal stuff. Great tips. So yes, check out what Kevin has to offer there and how you might get connected and supported in your business. And then we're going to switch gears, my friend, and we're going to talk about the real Kevin Bowen and maybe something we don't know about him or may not ever suspect. What might that be? Wow. What would you not suspect? Oh, my God. Um, <clears throat> I'm not as prim and proper maybe as everyone thinks or as, as uptight as everyone thinks. Um, I've had quite a uh, illustrious working career over the course of time in fitness. Um, some of you may know this, but I worked for David Barton and his wife, Suzanne Barsh, um, some years ago um, when I managed the gym at the Delano Hotel in Miami Beach. Um, and as well, one of his gyms in New York. So um, uh, um, my, how about my first meeting with David Barton? How about that? I've told this story. Sure. Let me tell you that real quick. So uh, I moved to Miami in 1995. I had just come from San Francisco. I was just starting my Pilates training. I had almost you know, finished the first half of it. I was teaching classes. I got a call. Someone was recruiting me. I had a background in managing uh, both in retail and in gyms, in addition to being a Pilates teacher. And I got pulled in to be interviewed um, as the general manager for the David Barton Gym at the Delano Hotel in Miami Beach, which was just opening. It wasn't open yet. So this was the summer of 95. And um, I, there was a woman named Portia, and I can't remember her last name now, but she had this interesting line of equipment. She was British, and it was from the UK, and it came over to the US briefly, uh, and she was working for David, so there's her, 
and the numbers to meet David. So we went to the Delano Hotel. It had just opened. We had some lunch outside. It was July, uh, Miami Beach, oh. hot <laughs> as hell. Uh, um, and I, you know, was under the impression I should be dressed. So I was wearing linen and I was all dressed up and we're sitting outside. And um, so there's this very prim and proper, pretty blonde British woman and myself. And then she said, oh, here comes David. So David comes to the table and he's wearing a little tiny white t-shirt with spaghetti straps and you could see his nipples and the whole thing and then a pair of uh, cut off jean shorts that were slid up on the sides so that they only came to the belt um and it was quite built you know and then he had platform tennis shoes on so they were about this high so he came to the table to sit to interview me which was like a fellini movie um, and then we went out he wanted to walk around the pool. He walked around the pool. In the meantime, I'm sweating bullets. He's <laughs> next to nothing. I'm standing next to him. We're walking around the pool at the Delano. All of the Midwest tourists who were just there for the day to see the beautiful new hotel and the pool are all like this, looking at this guy. And then he turns around and says, and here comes my wife, baby, where have you been? And I had never met Suzanne Barsh before. I'd only seen her. So she starts to come towards me in a, I'll never forget it, a dark rose colored broomstick skirt with a bustier on that was the same color with her boobs hanging all over the top of it and a pair of glasses on and her hair pulled up on like that and a matching pair of platform tennis shoes except in the color to match her dress uh, that David was wearing. And we walked around the pool and she went on and on about all of her fabulous, crazy stuff and how she wanted to have as many drag queens there as she possibly could have and everything else. Um, and it was a moment in my life that I will never forget because um, that was who I ended up working for for the next year was David and Suzanne. So there's oh a story my God. Seven. How's that? That, that's amazing. And I could totally, I mean, you and I both lived in Miami, so I could totally see that. Oh, um, it's hysterical. Yeah, Kevin and I met in Miami so many years ago. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your tips, your resources, uh, your generosity, what you're doing in the community. I think that that is a big inspiration for others of us now to think about what could I do? And it might be tapping on the neighbor's door that's elderly and seeing if they need anything. It could be super simple. It could be checking in with a friend. Let's be old school. Get to know your neighbors. Knock on their door. Say hello if you need something. You know, I'm Anna. How are you? Mm -hmm. You know, what's your name? That's it. You need some help. Let me know if I need some help. Can I call you? I think it works. Exactly. Well, thanks so much for joining me, Kevin. And thank all of you that are tuning in for the series. We appreciate it. And please take care. Bye. Ciao. Ciao.